Well hi there, welcome back. In this video we're going to check out our semi-restored 1972 Uber Junior 1354A Dirt Searcher. Try saying that after a few vodkas. Oh, cheers. <laughs> Yes, well, mm, this machine has not been fully restored by any means. And the reason for that is because, do you know what, I actually just want to use it. I, I really like the 1354A. Um, it's a great machine and it works really well. It does such a good job, especially on this rug. It really brings it up. It brings up the fibres and it makes it look really good. And I thought to myself, do you know what, I don't want to spend ages making it absolutely perfect when in actual fact, it probably never will be perfect. It's got quite a few um, knocks and bangs and scratches on it. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna keep this one for myself. I'm just gonna be for me. It's just for me. So I can use it around the house and it'll be fantastic. <clears throat> it'll, be, it'll be fantastic and I'll, have a, I'll enjoy using it. This is one that is in the collection, but it's one that's going to be used and do you know what? I thought to myself, uh, I'll do a couple of upgrades, or maybe not, maybe not upgrades, but changes to it. Now, what I found, and I don't know if you guys find this as well, but when you're using vintage machines, um, they've got really short flexes on them. The flex, the cable is really, really short, uh, and you kind of get spoiled when you're using more modern cleaners because they've got much longer flexes. You can plug it into one socket and then you can do six rooms with a modern machine. But the vintage ones, they were purposely made so you would change the plug in every room. You'd plug it into every room that you cleaned, which is a bit of a faff, frankly. And because this 1354A had this really odd um, addition of this plug here, I thought to myself, oh, why don't I just stick a Dyson flex on it? So I did. So that's a flex from a Dyson. Um, it's got a Dyson plug on it and it's got the um, terminal on the end. And I can just take this on and off. And it's awesome because I can just store it over the cleaner like that. It just sits there happily. I don't have to wind it all up and I can throw the machine in the cupboard and I can grab it whenever I, I want it. And then I, I can just take the cable off. How awesome is that? It's brilliant. Second thing I did was to put a Pepper flow bag in it from a pneumatic Henry. This improves the performance. I mean, it just, it's just, it's a, it's a sea change, frankly. It is so different. And now I can't get this bloody zip. Um, yeah, it makes such a difference to the airflow. You can see there, there's the Henry bag. You can literally just push it on. There's the original end from the Henry. Just push it onto the end of the bag throat it sits there fine. It doesn't come off, it sits there fine, and it works beautifully. The airflow, oh my God, what a difference. What an unbelievable difference. The cleaning performance of a Huber Junior or Huber Senior with a pneumatic HEPA flow bag in it is just out of this world. And it actually makes them really usable too. You can actually really use them. Um, they just become better vacuum cleaners, paper, such a bad idea, paper's rubbish. Now, if you recall in the, the previous video, it was a bit dusty. Um, this machine is really rather yellowed. Um, the hood is quite yellow. And I thought to myself, hang on a minute, I'm pretty sure back in the day, you used to be able to sand them off. If you sanded this plastic, you could actually remove the yellow layer. Now that's not ideal if you want a perfect and mint cleaner. It's not great, but now hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna hold this up like this. So I've sanded this bit here and I haven't sanded this bit. So that's been sanded, that hasn't. And look at the difference in the color. Hopefully if I can put it around like that, if I can hold it in a certain way so you can see it. It's quite a remarkable difference in color. And that's only a little bit of sanding. That's not going absolutely mental on it. That's just a bit. You just take off the top layer and it removes the, the yellow. Unfortunately, what it also does is 
I don't know if you can see there, but the original plastic is quite shiny, or it would be if it, if it wasn't horrifically yellowed. But the sanded bit is quite dull. You could bring this back. I don't know if you can see the dust that's coming off it still. Um, you, you can bring it back. If you machine buff this, you can bring it back to... Oh, there we go. That's, a, that's quite good. You can see the difference there um, and there. Um, yeah, but you, you can make this shine again. It's not the end of the world. So that is entirely possible. Um, but yeah, I think what I will do is I'll probably carry on sanding this. Carry on sanding with Kenneth Williams, Barbara Windsor, and um, I'll do the whole hood. But you can't do this bit here, because on these hoods, the height control levels are painted on or transfer printed on them, whatever it is. So you can't sand this bit because you'll sand them off and they will vanish. But yeah, so you have a little bit of a wonky area there, but on the whole, it should be okay. So I think that's enough waffling on from me now. Let's hook up the um, removable cable and see this machine in action. Just to say, there is a slight brush roll rattle. The brush roll does rattle a bit and I can't work out why, which is annoying me. So I'm going to have to go back in at some point, have another look at the brush roll and just do some tinkering. Um, but, uh, but yeah, until that point, it's fine. It works. It cleans. So let's check it out.